percent of the people, it's uh, you don't have direct view. In other words, there's another bone that's on top, and you have to somehow go around to get there. So you have to have some way to, to visualize. We also hope, by the way, because right now the cochlear implant itself is done by drilling behind here. Actually, the first time I observed this uh, surgery, they told me, don't worry, it's very simple. She'll go home tonight, the lady that was having it done. <coughs> so you go in the surgery room, and this lady is asleep. And the first thing that he, that he does is move, remove her skull. You know, make it, you know, you know like, <laughs> it's almost painting. You know? <laughs> the reason they did this is because then they drill the bone from back here so that they have a clear view to the round window to go in. Because if you do this way, then it won't go in easily. They also need to put the, uh, the coil to pick up the sound bone. So uh, right now it's pretty invasive. But if we have a way to, if we have a <coughs> visual feedback, I think she could drive it through the middle ear and it would be less invasive. Also, with these other techniques with uh, now with uh, regeneration, to deliver the drugs in the ear, you don't want to deliver them to the bloodstream very isolated, so you have to deliver them in the cochlear itself. So again, if you want to deliver them right there, uh, you can't just put a needle, you have to have some visual feedback. So there could be many applications for this, for the ear or for the other thing. Well, I suppose a, uh, this technique require calibration and uh, as well as you have noise environmental noise that you have to overcome and now the first question is calibration because uh, in this application with uh, me well, medical ap application the device has to mo move right it somehow has to move and to insert the fiber into the ear and once your fiber move then the face information may change. Then you have to do the calibration. And, and how often do you have to do the calibration? That's a very cool, good question. It's the, it's the but I talked about. This is the big but in this whole technique. Uh, so, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna repeat everything. Okay, let me go to this. To me, I saw this adaptive technique. I don't know if you recall that. Let me go to that for a second. This is a very key question, so it's, it's worth going back to this is, uh, now with this one I played this, yeah, here is where we continuously do the calibration. Right, see, so with without compensation, as this moves, we do compensation continuously. How do we do this? By having on the far end, a hologram that reflects back the point source. So we use that. Now, this is cheating a bit. Why is it cheating? Because we're not scanning. So if all I wanted to do is have a focus spot, let's say to burn a tumor or to do some surgery, this is good because I keep a focus spot. But normally, to do imaging, I would like to have maybe 100,000 of these spots. And each of them is its own training. So even though here you can see it at 30 frames a second, if I switch to the SLM that does 20,000 frames a second, okay, I can to some improvement. But that which we have, this TI device that's going to this. Now if you want to do even more faster, then uh, you have to also start thinking about tricks, not just draw more power. There are some tricks I think, but uh, you know not that I I mean for example uh, is it completely random? You know there's a lot of constraints here. So if, as I change is that change the, uh, like this memory effect? Is there any of this memory effect of fiber? Is that change the configuration of the fiber? Does the fiber, does the speckle pattern change? For those of you that, I'll say something that may be all, may be not related to all of you. But for example, there's a lot of memory effect in Z. Because if you think about the mode of the fiber, it's like a bezel beam. You know what that means? Because if those of you that have happened to have looked at the diffraction pattern coming out of the multi-mode fiber, it's circles. So characteristic of a bezel beam is two things. It does not diffract, so it propagates, and the other is it's Fourier transform into circles. So these this mode patterns don't change in Z. So 
can we use that by bending the fiber? Right? So there may be things you can think about. So one is raw technology go faster. Or, uh, the other is the other thing also with this multi-core versus multi-mod is if you till pick the uh, ROI, the region of interest is small, you know, then it's faster as well. So so this to deal with this problem right now we're dealing with rigid problems. Then we just have to worry about environmental stuff, temperature changes. We're going to be able to bend the fiber, then we can do this, uh, but then we're limited by the speed of the technology, so that's, that's the limitation. The limitation is about uh, 10 seconds right now. If you want it to be 10 seconds. It sounds like uh, it should be fast enough, but you know, for the surgeon, it's not good because if you get a flexible fiber every time you wait, you then you have to wait for 10 seconds. It's not, they wouldn't like it. <laughs> uh, then, uh, We automate it through the process. Then uh, yeah, there's other approaches to have a something that has elements, segments, <laughs> that can move, etc. Et okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Here's the question in the front. nice images and well I also work in microscopy so I'm very impressed by this book and uh, so the first question is uh, in the very beginning you show us um, by using um, face conjugation uh, we can achieve a very nice focus after a thick tissue is there any limitation on the thickness okay uh, very good question as well so this memory effect which I won't do uh, it tells you how much you can tilt a bit and still have your focus plot. And that, theoretically and experimentally, depends on the thickness. So normally we use, if you're familiar with volume gratings, we have a volume grating, it has angle selectivity, or X-ray diffraction, right? The diffraction for the thick periodic medium depends on the angle. It's the same thing, like the angular selectivity of uh, the average Rating that makes up this. So the answer is yes. Now, so that's, but that really relates to the ballistic focus. In other words, if I have a lens that focuses the light in a free space, that's all ballistic photos. Yeah. If I put something there and it still focuses, it means most of the light was ballistic. Now, if I have something that's non ballistic, the focus will go away, but the light will not go away. If you're familiar, photoacoustic, the claim can go much deeper because they work with spectrum, right? Uh, so now recently, there's been other techniques, I didn't choose to talk about them today, right? That work with optical imaging, but with non-ballistic problems, like the speckle scanning microscopy, etc. So, uh, I mean, at that time, that was breaking new ground, right? Working with the memory effect. But now, of course, memory effect is not enough, except if you have, you need a lot of distance between the scattering medium and the object, and you need thin scattering medium. For some applications, you may be okay. Like vessels, looking at uh, something, but uh, what it is, is limitation. Okay. So now the mention goes to speckle imaging or thick tissue? Or for the acoustic speckle imaging, yeah. We yeah. Have, uh, speckle imaging means you introduce a light beam and it doesn't focus because you don't have enough ballistic focus, so you have a yeah. speckle. But then you can change the speckle by moving the beam. And this changing speckle causes the fluorescence you measure in the back to be different. And now from these changes in the speckle through a number of steps, you can uh, image what's inside. So it's very powerful because, again, you want to be on this side of the skin. You don't want to go inside. But by changing the beam outside, inside, you change the speckle inside, hopefully in a predictable way, then that allows you to interpret the fluorescent images. Okay. So the second question is about uh, the multiple fiber imaging. Um, if I understand it correctly, you don't need the lens anymore in front of the fiber, am I right? You could choose to use it, but you don't need it, yes. You, don't, you could do, yeah, you do without it, but directly. Yeah. yeah. But I would say, given a specific application design, you may choose to use it just to get the right field of view, etc. Okay. 
So my question would be, um, with this technique, do you have um, any optical section capability? Um, ah, very good question, yeah, I see. The question is, can you do something like confocal? Right. Or, uh, so, with what, what, what I showed you today was all CW lasers. Now, we have techniques, which I didn't describe today because we didn't publish them yet, but uh, we're very, very good reviewers. It's like third reviewer again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, but believe me, there's ways to launch femtosecond pulses and get them to focus. Even multiple fiber. Multiple fiber. Well, I can tell you a little bit. So what you do is you take a uh, multiple fiber, you launch a femtosecond pulse, and you let them disperse. So now the different modes spread on the other side. <coughs> so at different time slots, you have a group of modes. So now it becomes almost single mode, you could say. You know, at certain time, a certain time yes. they have separated. So you make a hologram of that. Right okay. And you launch it back. Uh, okay. Now that's a nice time to see. But now we're we limited because we, we picked only a few spatial modes. Mm -hmm. There's a trade of now. So if you want to do some scanning, you know, you have to pick this. But then if you want more modes, you can pick a different delay, to pick multiple modes, and then launch them all together, like I saw before. Uh, but the third reviewer didn't quite get this one. <laughs> but then uh, the, uh, uh, suppose we have, suppose we have multiple mode fiber that has, then automatically you get it, because it's too far. Right? You get it. And then, uh, and you can focus in easy. There's ways to focus in easy. Or by uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, that, that's uh, one way. Another way, if you want to do natural fluorescence or natural femtosecond pulses, is use something called uh, we, it, we call it digital confocal. And the idea there is you record holograms, digital holograms uh, of all the light that's reflected back. Fluorescence? No, this no. not fluorescence. Fluorescence, you you would get section with two folds. For no fluorescence, you would get it by this uh, putting the pinhole in the computer. So there's a paper that we published it's called Difficult Digital Confocal Microscopy. So if, if you record it the right way, you have enough information to put the pinhole in the computer. Now, as you reconstruct where the pinhole will be, you block the light. So that, would, that would work. Please join me to thank the speaker again.